Welcome to At Issue. We're very fortunate to have the two candidates for the 18th Congressional District with us. My name is H. Wayne Wilson, and I'll be asking questions of each candidate in separate segments. The 18th Congressional District has the Democratic candidate of Junius Rodriguez of Eureka College and Darren LaHood of Peoria. Darren LaHood, being the incumbent, will speak to the questions in the second half of this program. The same questions will be presented in the same format, and there is no timing on these questions for the answers, but we ask each candidate to be as concise as possible. And welcome to At Issue, Dr. Rod Rodriguez. Thank and, you. Uh, Pleased to be here. Uh, we're going to start with the same questions as we will have for Mr. LaHood later. In 2007, the Supreme Court ordered the EPA to consider carbon dioxide a pollutant. The EPA's Clean Power Plan orders a 32% reduction in CO2. As Congress has not acted on the question of climate change, do you support a, a move of reducing carbon dioxide by 32%? I think that a reduction is going to be necessary one of the things we have to consider, and you mentioned that Congress had not acted on this, we may have to look at the particular time frame that was put in place by the EPA when the recommendation was made. Uh, we cannot automatically assume that if Congress were to take up this measure in, uh, in the next year or two, that the time frame that was originally considered would be workable. So we'll probably have to rethink uh, what time frame we could use and perhaps one of the other considerations might be whether the 32% is truly the target that we need to, uh, that we need to work with in, in, in the short run. I think one of the things we have to consider, a lot of times when this kind of measure comes up, the, the opposition would say that such a measure would be a jobs killer. And I think one of the things we have to start thinking about is the idea that legislation aimed at trying to improve conditions with respect to climate change creates a whole new type of industry uh, in, in same fashion with respect to clean coal, that instead of looking at this as something that can take away jobs for a district, there are opportunities where whole new industries can come into being that can assist uh, current manufacturers to be able to reach the uh, targets that are being set to make sure that the long range goal of uh, environmental improvement over the course of the next decade and, and beyond uh, can be attained. Next question is, in light of the revelation of wrongdoing at Wells Fargo and the $185 million fine that the bank had to pay, do you support the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? Why or why not? If you recall back when the uh, Great Recession occurred in 2008, the concept of too big to fail came along and we saw the, the bailouts that occurred of the banking industry and, and other sectors at, at the time. And, one of the things that we have failed to do effectively over the years is to make sure that true consumer protection is put in place. Uh, we need to make sure that there, is, uh, that there are entities out there that are making sure that the little guy, the you know, mom and pop businesses, the middle class, uh, in, in investor class, and, and, and those who are uh, utilizing the banking services are also going to be uh, protected, that we are not going to have an abusive kind of situation where large banks, large industries can simply uh, act as they will. And in this case, as I understand, there were fake accounts that were, uh, that were established. A fine is in good order, and, and the fine has occurred, but I think at the same time there has to be uh, true protection of those who were hurt by this in the long run. The next two questions are particularly important to residents of the state of Illinois. The first of those is the Illinois Manufacturers Association President, Greg Bays, says repealing the North American Free Trade Agreement would be devastating to the Illinois economy. Do you support NAFTA? And further, do you support the Trans-Pacific Partnership? I did support NAFTA when it was uh, developed back in the 90s. And at the time, the idea was that NAFTA was going to be beneficial in, in uh, the long run, not only to our local economy, but to the, to the national economy. And, and it has in some respects, but we've also witnessed uh, the loss of manufacturing jobs. Now, to be fair, not all of the loss of manufacturing jobs can be attributed directly to NAFTA or to trade deals. Part of this is because of uh, increasing automation in industry. 
So I, I think it's, uh, it's a false argument to say that NAFTA is the only thing responsible for the loss of, of the manufacturing jobs. I don't believe in the idea of extreme protectionism. I, I, I think that those that go down that, uh, down that path are using a false argument. We need to be able to trade with the world. It's important. Now, how we trade is really the key, the key issue that we have to consider. There is a clear distinction in my mind between free trade and fair trade. And I would say that fair trade really has three key components. One of those components is, are we ensuring that American jobs are going to be protected? Or will we basically be outsourcing much of the American manufacturing uh, to, to other nations? So that's one of the key things that we need to look at. The second thing is, we need to make sure that uh, environmental and safety concerns are in place in whatever agreements that we're looking at. Uh, keep in mind a few years ago when the United States was bringing in a lot of drywall from, from China. And uh, you know, we suddenly realized that there were you know, real hard environmental issues. Uh, it, it was not safe what we were bringing in. Uh, I think recently China has actually acknowledged that 16% of the agricultural lands in China are considered toxic with heavy metals. And if they're acknowledging 16%, we have to wonder if you know, the real number is probably well beyond that. Uh, the third factor that I think we need to look at is what I would call, how do we truly protect the dignity of labor? As you know, one of my areas of specialization in, as a historian is the history of slavery. The, the most recent book that I've done is a book on contemporary slavery. And I also serve on the editorial board of a, a journal of global slavery, an international publication. One of the things that troubles me about the TPP is that the United States essentially is turning a blind eye toward modern day contemporary slavery practices. Uh, the nation of Malaysia in particular, we reduced it from a tier three to a tier two status, saying that it was an acceptable trading partner. Uh, if it had remained at tier three, uh, Malaysia could not have been a part of this agreement. Uh, in similar fashion, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Brunei, are also nations that we have severe problems with with, with respect to their respect of the dignity of labor. When we are willing to turn a blind eye to the use of slave labor in other countries, what we're doing is we're ignoring the dignity of labor there, and at the same time, we're questioning whether we really respect the dignity of labor here by competing with slave labor. I would say this, TPP is probably not the ideal trade agreement. And I think we could do better. Uh, the United States could utilize its, uh, its ability to, to use most favored nation trading status to develop individual partnerships with countries in the Pacific Rim that could give us a better agreement than what TPP has produced. Since 1995, 75% of uh, federal crop subsidies have gone to 10% of farms, and that continues under the most recent Farm Bill. What is your vision for a Farm Bill? And be as concise as possible, yet explain your position. Okay. I think because of the debt situation that the United States faces, everything needs to be on the table when we look at what we can possibly cut in, uh, in, in the long run. And that includes agricultural subsidies. I don't believe that we could eliminate or phase them out in the short term. But I do believe that over the course of, uh, over the course of a decade, we can start to gradually uh, reduce the amount of support that, uh, that is put into agricultural subsidies. And, and keep in mind, this would also go into other subsidies as well. I don't think that we can really have any sacred cows, anything that we're going to say we, we will not touch. We, we have to consider everything. And so all, all alternatives uh, must be considered. What specific changes do you propose to strengthen the Social Security Trust Fund? We issued a policy statement on this back in the summer, and there were three key points that I brought up in, in that policy. Uh, the first was, I believe that over the course of a decade, we can raise the retirement age to 70. This would have to be done incrementally over the course of a decade. It would be done in such a way that individuals who are fast approaching the retirement age, and you know, myself included, you know, pe people who are approaching would not have to fear that uh, we would do this in such a way that it would be manageable and, and people would know what's, what's the moving target. Uh, the second consideration, currently uh, FICA 
uh, taxes are taken from about the first $120,000 of salary. There are some who are saying that that cap should simply be removed and that if you're making several million that you should be taxed on several million. The proposal that I put forward is we should raise uh, the level from 120000 to 200000 The reason why I went there and, and didn't say eliminate it completely is the third component that I've proposed is the idea of the use of means testing. And so to me, it would seem unfair if we were taxing someone on a million dollar salary, on the full salary, and then saying, oh, by the way, because of means testing, you will not receive any of this at all. I believe that those three points can be the starting point for a discussion. When we issued that proposal, by the way, I, I find this fascinating. When we issued the proposal, I, I got some pushback from both Republicans and Democrats and independents because people talk about the need to tweak and reform Social Security, but they rarely get to the specifics of how do you do it. Uh, my idea with the proposal that we put forward is let's use this as a starting point. It gives us, uh, it gives us a point where we can begin the conversation, and we'll see where it takes us from there. The growth in the immigrant population, both legal and illegal, in Illinois was 87 percent from 1990 to 2014, but it's only been 1 percent in the last five years. How important is controlling the number of immigrants entering the United States and what measures should be used to do so? I think there are many factors that have to be taken into consideration when we consider the question of immigration. And, uh, and you know, I, I have to say, when, when you have candidates that are running, you know, as exotic as Rodriguez and LaHood. The story of immigration is the story of America. We, we have always strengthened our nation and essentially reinvented our nation through the process of uh, immigrants coming here, finding opportunity in America, succeeding, and helping the nation to move forward. So I think one of the things we have to do with, with any policy respect, uh, respective of immigration is recognize that this is part of our national story. Uh, this is who we are. The other factor that we have to consider with respect to immigration is we live in a world today that is increasingly um, dangerous. You know, there, there, there is the, the ever-present reality uh, that there are individuals who might want to come to this nation and might want to do harm. And so we have to be very careful, very vigilant in terms of how we vet those who come to the United States. And this is not only true in terms of the context of immigration, but uh, we've had discussions about uh, the refugee situation as well, uh, where how we vet individuals becomes critically important. And I will say this, I think the United States on the whole does an effective job with this. You know, we can improve, but we're, we're doing an effective job, especially compared to some of the European nations that have seen uh, a lot of problems in, in recent months. I think with respect to the situation on the southern border, uh, I cannot support a proposal like Mr. Trump has made that we need to build a wall. I do, need, I do believe that we need to strengthen border security. We can do this in a variety of ways, uh, electronic surveillance, use of drones. There are many other ways that we can do this. And with that, we are out of time. Junius Rodriguez, the Democratic candidate for the 18th Congressional District, thank you so much for joining us. Junius is a professor at Eureka College. We'll be back in just a moment with Darren LaHood. We're joined now by Darren LaHood. Darren is the Republican candidate and the incumbent in the 18th Congressional District. Darren, thank you so much for joining us on Ed Issue. H, great to be with you and your viewers. And the same questions as we had for Junius Rodriguez, the first of which is, in 2007, the Supreme Court ordered the EPA to consider carbon dioxide a pollutant. The EPA's Clean Power Plan orders a 32% reduction in carbon dioxide. As Congress has not acted on the question of climate change, do you support the EPA's move? Well, I support clean water and clean air. We need to have that. In terms of how we um, address that from a public policy standpoint, with climate change and with all regulations, I think you have to have some reasonableness in there. Obviously, the Supreme Court has spoken on that, and we need to apply that appropriately. But, you know, I look at kind of the overregulation of the current economy, and I think there needs to be more reasonableness in that system. You know, if you look at Caterpillar, they've had four record years of losses. Part of that is tied to regulation, the war on coal, uh, these emissions uh, restrictions that have gone into place, mining and many of the restrictions there have really hurt Caterpillar over the years. So 
I'm supportive of structuring a law to implement that, but it's based on sound science, based on reasonableness to implement that, and to try to do it in a tiered approach so that we can, again, get the economy back going. You know, we're only at about a half a percent, one percent growth in this country. Getting back to two or three percent growth, we need that. Jobs, opportunities, particularly in central and west central Illinois, are vitally important. The next question in light of the revelation of wrongdoing at Wells Fargo and the $185 million fine that was imposed, do you support the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? Why or why not? Well, yes, I do. And I think if you've seen what's happened, we've had hearings in Congress before the Financial Services Committee run by Republicans. And they really took the chairman to task. And I'm glad the chairman has gone now. But when there is wrongdoing, that's uh, evident. And there appears to be some criminal uh, culpability there that I think the Justice Department will look at. That needs to be uh, vetted. That needs to be appropriately prosecuted. So I support the agency and, and support the agency when there is wrongdoing that that gets, um, uh, gets taken care of in the right way. We need to deter this kind of behavior. And when it's wrong, it's wrong, and we need to act appropriately. The next two questions affect Illinois in particular. The first of them is the Illinois Manufacturers Association president, Greg Bays, says repealing the North American Free Trade Agreement would be devastating to the Illinois economy. Do you support NAFTA? And further, the second part of this first question, do you support the Trans-Pacific Partnership? Please explain your reasoning. Sure. Well, in the abstract, um, trade that is done in a fair and transparent way is good for Illinois. It's good for my district in central and west central Illinois. We got to remember, 96% of the world lives outside of the United States. And so we have to create more markets that benefit our products, whether that's Caterpillar tractors, whether that's Caterpillar products, whether that's our corn and soybeans that are grown here in central Illinois, or many other manufacturers that produce goods. NAFTA, I think, has worked well. I disagree with my nominee, uh, Donald Trump, on this issue. NAFTA, ha NAFTA has benefited central and west central Illinois in terms of jobs and opportunities um, here, specifically on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. Uh, I will most likely have an opportunity to vote on that in the lame duck session. This uh, trade agreement, which has been negotiated over five years, a bipartisan issue, would set up 12 countries in Southeast Asia uh, as markets for the United States products. 40% of the corn and soybeans grown here uh, currently goes around the world to other markets. Under the TPP, that will expand to probably another 5%. So again, doing that in a fair, transparent way, I'm supportive of doing that. Is the TPP perfect? No, it's not. I have concerns about the sovereignty of the US, um, about, about the market share, about the manipulation of the dollar. Trade agreements are only as good as the enforcement mechanisms behind them. So we've talked about putting a trade czar in place, a trade prosecutor to enforce those um, violations. I I'm supportive of that. But in general, trade equals more economic opportunities for Central and West Central Illinois. Remember, the Illinois River right here, you look at the products that go up and down that river, go down to the, uh, New Orleans, go through the new Panama Canal, can go all over the world. This TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, will create this, uh, of those 12 countries, the majority of those are in Southeast Asia. This will be the largest trading uh, market in the entire world. And I also remind people the number one advocate against TPP are the Chinese. The Chinese don't want to see this happen because it is really an infringement on them and their growth. People ask all the time, how can you improve the economy? Less regulation is one of them. We talked about that before. But more trading opportunities is another one. I think TPP is on the right track to doing that. I'm hopeful we'll have a vote on that. And remember, this was negotiated by the Obama administration. It's a bipartisan issue. I think it's beneficial uh, to my constituents in central and west central Illinois. The second of the two questions that impact the state in particular. Since 1995, 75% of federal crop subsidies have gone to 10% of the farms. And that continues under the most recent farm bill. What is your vision for a farm bill when it comes up again? Well, I remind uh, my friends from Chicago all the time, ag is the number one industry in Illinois. Uh, it has been that way. It's the number one industry in my district. And um, we have to support ag. And so I was not in Congress when we debated and passed the last farm bill. We'll have another one in 2018. Um, but there are many important issues that affect our farmers uh, here in uh, central and west central Illinois. 
Of the 435 congressional districts, H, mine is the ninth largest in terms of corn and soybean production. And you think about the agribusiness that is created from uh, our, uh, our agriculture commodities. I am generally a supporter of crop insurance and need to keep that in place. Is there always uh, a way to look at it to make it more eff uh, effective, efficient, and accountable? Absolutely. I think we will examine that moving forward. But, you know, people talk about subsidies in agriculture and like to look at crop insurance sometimes. I'm of the opinion there are many subsidies in agriculture, whether that's sugar or whether that's peanuts. If we want to look at that on a comprehensive basis, not unilaterally, I think that's a good conversation to have if we get rid of all of them. But to look at say for instance crop insurance or ethanol and subject those out, I don't think that's the right approach to take. Again, I'm hopeful that the farm bill will be helpful to our farmers here locally. I look, look forward, if I'm fortunate enough to get elected, to being part of that. What specific changes do you propose to strengthen the Social Security Trust Fund? Yeah, well, the, the current trajectory of our Social Security Trust Fund um, is not good. It is, it is a runaway train. It is headed for insolvency if we don't do something. And so um, I'm supportive in general of means testing. I'm also supportive of, of for, uh, for instance, I'm 48 years old age. If, if personally raising the retirement age uh, to a higher level, I think uh, people are living a lot longer. People are working a lot longer. I think that's a reasonable approach to that. I don't think people that are retired or close to retirement, we should um, you know, uh, change their benefits. I think uh, th that's the wrong time to be doing that. But clearly, if you look at the younger generation, doing it in a more tiered approach, we have to look at all ideas. It has to be done in a bipartisan way to fix the Social Security Trust Fund for uh, the next generation. And next, the growth in the immigrant population, both legal and illegal, in Illinois was 87% from 1990 to 2014. That's the growth. But only 1% growth from 2010 to 2014. So a, a drop in the number of immigrants coming to Illinois. How important is controlling the number of immigrants entering the U.S and what measures should be used to control that immigration? Yeah. A couple things. Um, when I was a former federal prosecutor, I actually prosecuted a lot of immigration cases in federal court, sent people back to their country of origin when they violated our immigration laws. A couple things, a couple observations. I think, first of all, you have to secure the border. We just had statistics come out in the last uh, six weeks here that still about 60% of the people that try to get across the border do, in fact, get across the border. Securing the border um, has to be a big part of what we do, um, not only for illegal immigration, but for diseases, for terrorism, for drugs that flow across our border. Um, so you have to secure the border. Second part is I'm very supportive of fixing our legal immigration process. I've been able to participate in a number of naturalization services over the last year since I've been in office. You know, these are people that did everything we asked them to do, right? They played by the rules. They went back to their country of origin. They went through a background check. They paid the appropriate amount. Um, but that takes three to five years. That is too long. Streamlining that process to maybe one or two years, we, t we should be able to do that with technology and modernizing our system. I'm very supportive of that. I look at how that system has helped uh, employees at Caterpillar, at State Farm, which is in my district. More legal immigration, uh, doing it the right way, I think is beneficial. But I do have concerns about uh, people that come from countries that are affiliated with terrorism. And there is probably eight in the Middle East uh, in particular. I think we have to have a higher level of scrutiny of refugees and immigrants that come from Libya, Somalia, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, um, and a number of other countries that have been involved with terrorism. If you look at the lone wolf attacks that have happened, say in Bernardino, Orlando, Nice, France, Belgium, Paris, we owe it to the safety of our citizens to have a higher level of security. That's why I supported a bill uh, about a year ago in the Congress that would, that would add a higher level of scru scrutiny Make sure that the FBI certifies that anybody that comes from those countries, not based on their religion or where they come from, but strictly because of the terrorist activity that has gone there. I'm going to continue to be supportive of that. Uh, unfortunately, terrorism and ISIS are not going away. Because Donald Trump has made a point of it, I'd like you to address the question of the wall along the southern border with Mexico. I do not believe a, a wall is the way to solve our immigration problem. If you remember... Um, the biggest criminal in Mexico, El Chapo, uh, they captured him, they put him in a prison, they had huge walls around him, and he escaped under a tunnel. My point being, um, 
I, the wall is not the answer uh, to solving immigration. Securing the border is, again, and, uh, and, and stopping the flow from coming across. So I disagree with him on that. Darren LaHood, Republican candidate and incumbent for the 18th Congressional District seat. Thank you so much for joining us on that issue. We appreciate it. It is now time for you to go to the ballot box, whether you're voting early or on November the 8th, and cast your ballot for one of the candidates for the 18th Congressional District seat. We'll be back next week with another edition of At Issue. We're going to be talking about the difficulties that people coming out of prison face in finding housing and employment. We'll do that with the Helping Hand Resource Center individuals who help those uh, inmates. And we'll do that next time on At Issue.